hello guys welcome back to the channel so in this video we'll uh, explore a portfolio project for data analysis using the walmart sales data set uh, in mysql so as a data analyst creating a portfolio project uh, can be a, an excellent way to showcase your skills your abilities your potential to different put uh, to different employers or potential employers okay uh, in this project we will be focused on analyzing walmart sales data to gain insights and improve business uh, strategies so uh, we'll use MySQL, a popular open data, uh, open source data, relational database management system to store and manipulate data to answer different business related questions. So in this uh, in this tutorial, we'll, learn diff we'll go through step by step instru uh, instructions or steps uh, to set up our database, which involves creating our database schema, inserting data into the database from a CSV file, and then running different queries against the database to uh, uh, answer different business questions that I'm going to show you later, uh, just in a few. So by the end of this video, you'll be, uh, you have a solid understanding of how to create data, uh, a data analysis portfolio project using MySQL and be able to apply these skills to your own projects in the future. This project will also give you an idea of how data analysis can be used to, uh, to, to drive business decisions and help organizations achieve their goals. So if you're interested in learning more about data analysis, MySQL, or anything data related, Please can click, please can click on the subscribe to YouTube channel and uh, perfectly uh, this video is for you and you're going to uh, go ahead and gain a lot of values from this. So let's get started with it. So I have uh, uh, a Markdown, uh, sorry, yeah, basically a readme file that says uh, written in Markdown. So I have all the steps that you're going to follow, all the different questions that you're going to try to follow. And uh, this will can ask, uh, act as a template for you so that you guys can also use this whenever you're doing a data analysis project. And uh, again, I'm going to provide a link to this uh, document on the, uh, on my GitHub and the link is going to be in the description of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and start first look at what you want to, uh, let's look at what the project is going to be about. So what's the project about? The project aims to explore Walmart's data to understand the top performing branches, the products and sales trends of different products and customer behaviors. That's basically what this project is about. So this project, you're going to use the Walmart uh, sales data, which can be found in this link right, which is on Kaggle. Okay, so it's a Kaggle Walmart sales forecasting competition. So that's where I got the data from. So, okay, so I'm going to be using this data right here to build a, a, basically build a schema, insert the data into, data into the schema, and then write different queries against this yeah, database to answer the business question that I have listed down here. Okay, so I'm going to show you those questions just in a minute. So this is more about the data set. If you want to read more about it, this I got this uh, phrase from Kaggle. So you can uh, read more about it. Okay. Again, this documentation will be provided to you guys, so don't worry about that. So uh, what's the purpose of this project? So the main aim of the project is to gain insight into the sales data of Walmart to understand the different factors that affect the sales of the of the different branches, different products, and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, what about the data? Again, the data is just uh, from the Kaggle Walmart sales forecasting competition. This is where I got the data from, and data has a couple of uh, a couple of uh, different columns. So there are seventeen different columns in total, and there are one thousand uh, one thousand uh, rows in total. But if you insert if you insert the data, you get uh, a bit less rows. Okay. So this is data that we have right here, and you can see your data, data. These are the different columns. So let's go ahead and actually create this data. There are this database. Okay. Yeah, so to dive into the creating a database, I already have uh, all this. I leave the, the different columns, the different descriptions, and find the data types for each of these columns. Okay, so we're going to use this table right here to create our database. So I'm just going to go into my SQL Workbench right here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a database. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a database right here. I'm going to call this one. Uh, I'm going to call this one. I'm just going to say uh, I'm going to uh, create a database, and I'm going to call it just any name that you want. Okay, so I'm going to say create uh, data. Is uh, if uh, not exists, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a database in case the database does not exist. So what name do we give to this database? We're going to call this database. Uh, let me just say Walmart. Uh, I mean, I already have a database called Walmart Sales. So I don't want to use that database. So I'm going to give it a different name. So I'm going to call this one uh, Sales Data Walmart. Uh, Walmart just like that okay so once I have this done I'm just gonna go ahead and let me just reduce the font a bit and I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight all of this and simply uh, create this pre pre press on that and that's gonna go ahead and create a database right there so if you come back into my side panel right here I'm gonna go ahead and click on refresh and immediately I click on refresh you should be able to see it right here sales Walmart data and if I go inside of it you don't see we don't have any table at the moment so I want to go ahead and make this one uh, set, set it as my default schema so I'm gonna uh, right click on the database name and then simply go ahead and say set as a default schema 
So that's going to be my default database. So whenever I'm writing queries, I don't have to say the name of the database and then dot and then a table and then dot a column. I don't have to do that. Okay. Okay. So once I have this done again, or once I have this done, then we can go ahead and create a table. So to create a table, I'm just going to say create a table if uh, not exists, right? To create a table in case it does not exist, we're going to call it uh, sales. Okay. So once we have that created, they're going to go ahead and insert in all the different columns that we need for this table. Okay. So we need a couple of columns to uh, for this table to uh, to create this table. The first I'm going to go ahead and do uh, we're going to have the invoice. So let me say call it. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to add a call this one uh, our invoice. Right, so I'm say invoice invoice underscore id. Invoice id is going to be a var character, a variable length character. It's going to be of thirty. And then finally, you're going to go ahead and have. Uh, we're going to say it's not now. So not now. And then you say primary. Uh, key. So why am I getting all this information knowing that it's going to be a variable character? Well, I got this from our database. So let me just go ahead and go into my desktop. And then finally here, uh, let me just go into my projects and then finally find my Walmart. Okay. So Walmart sales right, right here. And I'm going to go ahead and open this CSV file. So instead of this CSV file, you'll be able to see the data. So I'm going to simply click on OK. And once I click on OK, you can see the data. We have the data right here. So you can see we have the invoice, we have the branches, the city, uh, the customer information, the gender, and all that information. So you can see the invoice ID is going to be a variable length character because it can be an, basically an, a string, right? So I'm just going to be uh, specifying it that way. So once we have that done, you also go ahead. Let me just go and see what other columns that we need. So let me bring back this. Uh, so we need another column right here, and this column is going to be uh the branches the branches information right the branch so we're going to have a branch uh, branch and this branch is going to be uh let's say uh it's going to be a variable character the, the column name is going to be branch so it's going to say branch and branch is going to be a variable character a variable length character and it's going to be uh let's say five characters okay depending on what i i see in my table this five character is very uh, good for it so we're going to say five characters and you're going to go ahead and simply say it's not going to be not I'm going to say not uh, now, just like that. And you're going to also going to have city. So city is going to be another column that we have. Again, you can go ahead and check out uh, check out the data so that I'm going to provide in the link uh, in the description of the video. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to waste your time by going over a data set and all that. So you guys can go ahead and simply check that out. Okay, so I'm just going to speed this up a bit so I save you uh, time. Okay, so we also have the city, you also have the customer, uh, customer. It's going to be customer underscore type and customer type you're going to say it's going to be a variable length character so a character you're going to go ahead and simply say it's going to be 30 characters and uh, it's going to be uh, not now okay so uh, i did a research on checking the database so i have all this figured out before the tutorial so i don't have to waste your time uh, going over the data okay if you want to, if you want access to the data you can always check the link in the description so gender is also going to be a variable character and it's not going to be now Okay, so we're going to say variable character you can leave it to be 30 but you can also leave it to be something like 10 because it is going to be male or female right so you can say something like 10 characters okay okay so once we have that done you're also going to go have another column it's going to be called uh, another column right here is going to be called the product line so product uh product underscore line and product line is going to be of type variable character okay so variable character and variable character, we're going to go ahead and have a variable character of 100 words, okay, 100 characters maximum, and it's not going to be now. Okay, what's the next column? We're going to also have unit price. So unit price, uh, that's going to be lowercase. So unit underscore price, and unit price, you're going to make it a decimal. A decimal is going to be having a 10 digit, right? And then two of them are going to be decimal places. You're going to say also not now is required, okay? So once I have that, I'm also going to check the next column, which is going to be a quantity and it's going to be of integer. So quantity, so quantity is going to be quantity. So quantity, uh, quantity is going to be of type integer and it's going to be not now. Okay. So once I have that done, I also go ahead and go ahead and specify the next column. And next column is going to be, uh, let's see the next column of the quantity. We have VAT. So VAT is going to be for our taxes, right? Value added tax. So I'm going to say uh, VAT value at the tax and it's going to be of type uh we're going to say float and it's going to be float of six characters let's say six by four okay and then it's going to say it's not a null it's also a required field okay so uh, once we have that done you're also going to go ahead and have total which is going to be the total revenue from a sale so total total is going to be of decimal because this is going to be uh, an, 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 
a monetary value and we talk about i talk about all this about monetary values and all these data types in my introduction to uh, my school series so if you haven't checked that throughout i can leave a link in the description or I'll leave a card on the video so that you guys can find that uh, whole series so it's a whole series on introduction to mysql and data analysis using mysql okay so if you are new to mysql you can check out that whole series on mysql okay so let's jump back into in here so we have total is going to be of decimal type we're going to say it's going to be 12 characters uh four of which are going to be decimal so i got all this information from analyzing the data so do, uh, don't worry about that again if you want to check the data yourself the links will be in the description of the video so we have the total column done what other column do we need you also need the date column and date uh sorry let me just keep that lower case so date and it's going to be of type date uh time okay and date i'm going to say date time and say not uh, now just like that and also we're going to have the next column which is going to be time column so time sorry uh, my bad so it's going to be down here uh it's going to be time right time and the type here is going to be uh time and you're going to say not not now just like that and you're also going to have another one it's going to be called payment and payment is going to be a variable character it's going to have 10 different uh variable character and you're going to say let's say you can say it's going to be 15 characters maximum you say not now okay that will be required as well and also we also also have the last one is going to be called uh cox right? okay this is actually payment method and not payment so payment underscore method so i got that wrong so payment method and next one is going to be next one is going to be cogs right the cost of the goods sold so let's go ahead and add it right here so cogs and it's going to be let me see the data type of this one is going to be decimal okay so let's say decimal is going to be 10 10 10 uh, digits in total of two of which are going to be of decimal place and it's going to be say not, not now so we're going to be uh, required to pass in that field again you also have another column you have to have is called gross margin percentage so let's say gross underscore margin underscore per percentage percentage just like that gross margin percentage and it's going to be uh i can say gross percentage margin and say pct uh like this that's also percentage so that you can use that as a short form for, for, for percent and it will be float and you're going to say 11 out of nine of which are going to be there's more places okay from from the data i've looked at this is what uh, is there okay so also i have another column it's going to be called gross underscore Thing it's called gross income yeah gross income and it's going to be of data type again okay, it's going to be a monetary value so it's going to be decimal uh decimal 10 characters uh let's say 12 characters two of which are going to be uh four of which are going to be decimals and then it's going to be not now because you are, this field is required as well and then finally we are going to have the last column which is going to be the rating so rating and rating i'm going to go and say float and i'm going to say two of which one can be a decimal because Dating like this 8.5, 8.6, something like that, right? 5.4, some there's some rating. Okay. Okay, so once we have all that done, we're going to simply run this query. So just highlight and select them just zoom out a bit. So we'll just highlight all that query and then simply run it to create the database. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all this, uh, create a database portion and simply run this right here. And that's going to go ahead and create a database. So if I go ahead and refresh this, now I should be able to see one table right here which is called the sales table so if i look at it right now we don't have any data inside of it so now that we have this database created now let's go ahead and import the data into our uh, into our, our database so i'm just going to go down here which is going to be called right here uh, which is just import record from an external file so just uh, go ahead and click on this the table view right here to open up this view once it's open up click on this icon right here where the mouse is the mouse cursor is located which is going to just say import data from an external file so click on that and let me go ahead and browse uh my file is going to be in here and then uh sorry it's going to be on walmart so just select the walmart and then finally i want to select the csv file so let's say uh, open and then say next and then say uh, use existing database so our database is going to be the walmart and our table is going to be uh, this the, the, our, our database is going to be this one and our table is going to be sales table so once you have that selected and then i can also go ahead and truncate before uh, in, in import okay so just click on next and let's go here and change this to be uh this to be windows one uh, 1250 this is gonna be for my, my on my machine because on my machine whenever i use utf8 it doesn't work and gives me an error so if you're having any error you can go ahead and try any of these options and see what works for you but first try out utf8 and if it doesn't work then resort to another means but for me i have tried a couple of things and uh, for me this is what works so i'm gonna use that okay 
So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and match all the different columns. So if you look into our data or into our CSV file, which is going to be this one right here. Uh, let me just bring back this. This is the CSV file right here. So we're going to match all the columns in here to the database columns that we have. Okay. So if you look, you're going to go ahead and match all them here. So invoice is going to be the invoice ID, which is going to be this column right here. Okay. And then finally, uh, branch, which is branch, which is this one right here. Okay. We are going to match it with uh the branch detail branch column from our database so so cities to city and then customer type to customer type the gender to the gender product line to product line quantity uh unit price unit price quantity to quantity and then tax to vat and then uh total to total and then date to date sorry and then date to date and then uh time to time and then payment to payment methods so once we have that again this square and click on next and just click on next so that should take some time and you should uh, go ahead and import the data into our model so let's give it some time to do uh, that data import okay that's done so i'm going to click on next and you can see we have uh, 9105 records being imported so it's going to click on finish and once i have that done i can just close uh, all these two and go back in here and click on this view right and now you can see we have data populated inside of our database right so this is the CSV file that we had originally from in here now it's inside of our sql uh, mysql database so now that we have that we can begin to write our uh, different queries and begin to answer the different business questions so uh let's just go ahead and do that so i'm just going to go ahead and bring back this and let's now that we have the database created now let's look at the analysis list so the first thing i want to do i want to do a product analysis to analyze uh, a different product data then I want to move on to the sales analysis and then finally uh, complete from the customer analysis. Again, if you want to read more into this, uh, uh, the, 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 the file is going to be available on my GitHub repository. The link is going to be in the description. Okay. Okay. So our, pr our process we're going to be using to solve this problem is first of all, we need to do some data cleaning, some data wrangling. Uh, basically, we don't want uh, the, the easiest way of thinking of data wrangling or data cleaning. Basically, we're just making sure that we don't have any null value in our data. And uh, I can assure you that that is already taken care of because we have not now in all our table queries. You can see not now. So in case anything was now, it, it, would, it, uh, it wouldn't be inserted. It would give us an error. But now you can see we have not now. So that means that all the records are filled. And you can go ahead and visually inspect all this. You shouldn't see any column having a null value or any row having a null value, right? So that's basically it. So for our data cleaning, we are sorted with that because we have the not now uh, in our database creation, okay? So once we have that done, now we're going to do some feature engineering. So feature engineering, basically, we are generating new uh, new features or new columns in our database in our database from existing columns that we have. Okay. So the first thing I want I want to generate a column called time of the day, which is going to be either in the evening, in the morning, or in the afternoon. Right. So we're going to use this uh, like to store some do some analysis. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, insert a, a a column or a feature that's going to be storing the time of the day, evening. Uh, morning or afternoon okay so let's go ahead and do that so let me just go back in here and go back uh, right in here okay okay so in here what i'm going to do let me just keep a bit of spacing right here i'm just going to keep uh, some comment right here and be feature uh, let's say feature engineering so uh, we can actually just give it a, a bit of decorations right here right this is going to be the first line and then finally and then go ahead and say be a feature engineer efficient engineering and then finally i can uh, end that okay so feature engineering so for feature engineering what i'm going to go ahead and do i'm going to the first thing i'm going to do i'll go ahead and do in feature engineering is first of all create the columns that you're interested in okay so let me just keep this right here and let me just also keep some space right here so it's going to be uh, inserting the time uh, underscore of underscore day right I think, I think i call it time of day yeah so so we're going to go ahead and insert a column for that so uh, what i'm going to do simply go ahead and do and say select i'm going to write a select statement select uh, i'm going to have a uh, time which is one of the columns that uh, from our data our database so i'm going to select time and then this is going to be uh, uh from so i'm going to say from our sales data right so from we call it sales okay so basically select time from sales and you're going to have another another thing that you want to do in here so in here well if you just run this query right now if i just let me just show you this uh, step by step so if i go ahead and run the query now uh it should get back an error info right here let me see what error we're getting back it says uh 
okay so a specific number of digits for floating or point object uh, why is that the case okay let me just end this with semicolon and then simply sometimes it gives you just this annoying error so let me just go ahead and simply run this query again so now you can see we have the information there so great so sometimes my SQL just uh, gives you this kind of error so i uh, just be patient with it sometimes so let me just try to bring this one down so you can see we have all that information right there which is going to be just a different day so if it's it is uh 12 o'clock or from 00 uh, 00 hours to 12 zero, 12 zero, zero hours then that's going to be in the morning anything above that is going to be in the evening but uh anything from 12 12 uh 12 o'clock to uh, four o'clock in the evening you're going to call it afternoon and then else is going to be in the evening okay so let's go ahead and write that query right here. so i'm going to be using something called a, a case statement in my school so if you don't know what a case statement it is just like a switched case uh, statement in uh, programming languages like python or java c plus plus is just the same thing so if you again if you're new to the basics of my school i have a whole series on my school so you can check that those series out so i'm going to go ahead and sim simply go ahead and say uh case and case i'm going to go ahead and say when i'm going to have a when here and you're going to say when uh, i'm going to say when uh time so let me just keep this low okay so let me just say uh use uh, back ticks here so when time uh between when, to, when the time is going to be between uh zero zero dot uh, dot uh, zero zero colon uh zero 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 sorry uh colon zero zero right if the time is between this and uh and uh, we're going to go ahead and say until 12 in the noon right so 12 zero zero colon zero zero right and then uh if that's the case then you're going to have a, a, a then statement so i'm going to say uh then and i'm going to say it's going to be morning so morning right here so if the time is going to be between 12 right zero 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 hours to 12 zero zero hours then it's going to be morning what else can we have can you have another case statement right here yes we can so i can simply just go ahead and simply copy this right in fact i don't actually need this comma right here i can get rid of it i can just simply go ahead and simply copy this right here and simply paste it right here and you're going to go ahead and change this a bit so it's going to be 12 12 zero zero and you can say one 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 minute or we can yeah there's something like this and you can go ahead and simply say until 6 maybe 14 uh 16 zero 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 hours you're going to go ahead and say that's going to be in the afternoon so afternoon and then if i'm going to have an else statement when you say else you're going to say uh evening so in case we didn't match this uh, statement or this statement you're going to default to evening close okay so i'm just minimize this right here okay so once i have this done you can give this a name so you can say us uh, you can call it the new screen time underscore off uh, underscore day just like that so this is going to be done towards the time of the day so i can simply go ahead and simply uh let's see what we have right here it seems to be giving us a bit of error right here but i don't uh spot the error so time and then finally we have that information uh generated right there so that shouldn't be an error so let's go ahead and actually run it and see so i get an error you have an error in your sql uh the cells at line this much okay so let's see why i get that error okay i think i just found what the error is i need an end statement right here so i need an end just like that so yeah that's basically what i need to do so once i have this done here, i can just go ahead and simply select this one more time and run this again so now we can see right here we have the time and finally this is going to be the evening so evening is going to be the afternoon afternoon uh let's find morning and this year this year is morning so you have the morning uh this also is morning so you have morning date as well uh the morning as well so good so now we can see how we have generated this uh, this information now what you want to do is to create another column in here and insert that in, uh, information into those columns. So how do we do that in MySQL? So we just go, we can use the alter, alter, alter table option and then finally just insert the data that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to do that in here. So I'm just going to go down here and simply say uh, alter, uh, alter uh, table. You're going to say the table you want to alter is called the sales table. And finally, you're going to say add, uh, add. Uh, column so you're going to go ahead and simply add a column and the column you're going to call it time uh time underscore of uh underscore day so time of day and you're going to say the character and the var character you can just say it's going to be 20 characters okay just to store the morning afternoon or evening even 20 is a match but i'm just going to leave it to be 20 characters okay so this is going to go ahead and create another empty column inside there so just go ahead and simply run it so if you go in here and just uh run this again we should see now we have that uh, column right here 
and it has now data instead of it right here, which is this right here now. Okay, so now what you want to do is actually insert data into this column. We just we, we don't want it to be now. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can insert data into that column. Okay, so to insert the data into the column, what you have to do is simply using the update option. So we're going to say update, and then the name of the table that you want to update is going to be our sales table. And then finally, we go ahead and simply say use the set option. So set, so uh, update, so update. Uh, let me get the spelling right. So update the sales table. And you're going to go ahead and simply set the time, time of underscore day column to be a specific column, which is going to be sorry a specific information that we want. And this is which I'm going to keep it inside of this parenthesis. So what do we want? What information do you want to update this with? And this information is going to be just this uh, case statement right here. So I'm just going to copy it and simply paste it in here. So paste it there. So good. So that's all we need to do to have that uh, case and case statement in there to update our column. So yeah, I can just tap this a bit forward. So now if you run this, uh, what you're simply going to do is going to update our column with the new information right here. Uh, basically the day, the evening, or uh, the, uh, the morning, the afternoon, the evening data. But this, if I run this query, I can assure you it's not going to work. We're going to get an error. Okay, so I'm just running to show you uh, that you're going to get an error. So you can see uh, it actually worked because I actually uh, did some change, changes to my school. So in your case, you might get an error and this might not work. So how do you solve it? So to solve it, you have to go into, um, you have to go into, up here, you have to go into edit. At the edit, you have to go into preferences. Okay, that's going to open this new window. And then go under SQL editor right here. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can see a uh, save update. So you have to now uh, for it by default it is it is ticked but so you have to go and untick this and then press okay okay so if you're having an error saying something something maybe you cannot update the re update rejected or something like that just go come in here uh, go into edit preferences and then go into sql editor and then simply uncheck this box right there which is called save updates uncheck that box and press okay and after the, after pressing okay you have to now re reconnect to your server so you have to go into query uh, right here and say reconnect uh, to server basically this one right here okay for me i've already done that in my case so that's why i'm not getting an error so now that we have done that update let's go ahead and see if uh, if you have any information inside of our database again so just go ahead and simply run this and now let's scroll to the side and you can see now we have this column being fi filled with evening morning afternoon or uh yeah this guy those three three different data records so now that we have that uh, record done, good, we are good to go. So that's one step down. Now let's move on and, and do another feature engine, which is going to be inside the day of the, the day on which the transaction took place. Whether it's on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, or a Friday. So this can uh, enable us to see on which days of the week the business is performing better. Okay. So this can be used to advise business, uh, uh, business, uh, the business department on which days to stock more because sales are probably going to be high. Right. So let's go ahead and add that column. So I'm just going to go back into my database right here and I'm going to go ahead and add that information. So I'm going to go out and paste it right here. So this is what we're going to go ahead and do. So what to do this first of all, let's just write the query to select the, the, the day information. Okay. Okay. This is actually the day. Yeah. The day name. Okay. The name, the month name or the day name. So basically we can get the month name or the day name. Okay, let me just go back in here and see. Uh, okay, we can also get the month name, but for now, let's first of all, let's do the one of the day and then finally we move there to the month. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, write the query right here. So I'm just going to uh, scroll a bit uh, down so you guys can see this clearly. So I'm going to say select, and I'm going to say select, uh, I want to say the date, which is a column that we have in our database, the date, comma, and uh, I want to select, let me just select the date from. Uh, from our sales data table, basically our sales table, and just get rid of that. So if I run this query and let's see what we get, we get back the date information, right? So we want to use this date information to determine which day of the week on uh, that day that date corresponds to. So now let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say if you have a function in here in MySQL, so this function is called day name, and for the day name, you just pass in the time info, the date, and it's going to return to you the day of that uh, or on, on which that day uh, that date occurred so i'm just going to go ahead and select all this and simply run the query so now you can see uh this it was on a wednesday this was on a thursday this was on a wednesday this was on a tuesday uh, wednesday and all that information right that's exactly what we want now what you want to do is to create uh, sorry uh, what you want to do now is to create another column instead of our table right here and insert that data into our column okay so let's go ahead and create a column and you're going to use the alter option again so say alter 
uh, just like that we did last time. So alter, uh, it's gonna be alter table and it's gonna be uh, the sales table. And what you want to do is add uh, a column. So add a column in there. And this column name, you can call it day underscore name, okay? Or whatever name you want to call it. And this is gonna be a variable character because it's gonna be a string, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it's gonna be a string. Saturday, Sunday, is all that's a string. So let's say it's gonna be a maximum of 10 characters. So if you run this right now, this is going to go ahead and create uh, another column instead of uh, another row, another basic another column. So if I go ahead and check this column out, uh, if I scroll, you can see we have another column called day time, which is basically having null values. So now we need to populate the null values with this information that you're going to get right here. Okay, which is going to be the day information. So this you can call it as well. You can say as uh, day underscore name. Okay, so if you run it again now, the column should be uh, should be renamed here. Okay, so I want to insert this information into this part of our table. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a basically do an update statement. So update, we're going to update our sales. We're going to go ahead and say set uh, set day underscore name to the following. So we're going to set date name to this parenthesis right here. And in here, we're going to pass in the information that we want to do. Basically, actually, we're going to the parenthesis. We're going to say day uh, name and then pass in the date. Okay, so date, just close this, okay? Date, just like that. So that's all we need to do uh, to be able to uh, insert the information into our table. So we'll just select this and then execute this. So once this is done, if you go back in here and then run this again, now if you scroll this way, you can see now on the day name, we have all that information there. Okay, good. So that's one uh, one more feature engineering done. So the last one is gonna be in getting the month name. Like uh, there, there are three main months, January, February, and March. Now you can use this month name to see which month of the of the time of the period the market is performing better. Where we're, on which month will we get more sales and other information like that? So that's why I want to create the month column. So we can also get the month column from the date. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and simply uh, paste this right. It's gonna be actually month name. So let me copy that and change that to be month name. Okay. So uh, for the month name, what I'm going to go ahead and do is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and simply say. Uh, uh, select and I'm going to go ahead and say select again the date and finally the month uh, name from the date right so we get the date and we'll be able to pull out uh, the identify which month it is and then finally return the name of that month so this is a function in my school so you don't have to worry about uh, the logic behind this function but basically that's what it does right so it just give it a day uh, it returns you the month on which date on which date that occurred so you can see this is on March right start March this is January, January, this is March, March, this is March, February, and all that information. There are three main months, January, February, and March. Okay, so once we have that now, let's go ahead and again, create another another column. So let's say outer, outer table, it's gonna be the uh, sales table. And we're going to say add a uh, column. And the column, is, uh, the column is going to go ahead and add, add in, it's gonna be called month underscore name. So once you have specified the column name, you're going to specify the data type of that specific column. And this is going to be a variable character. And you're going to say it's going to be 10 characters because it's going to be storing just the month name, right? Like January, February, that shouldn't be more than uh, 10 characters. So once I have that selected, I'm going to go ahead and run it again. And if you go back in here and run this query again, uh, you should now be able to see that date information. So if I just bring this up here. Now you can see we have that column being now. So let's go ahead and actually fill in that column. Uh, so to fill in the column, I'm just going to go ahead and I just uh, basically use this function, right? Yes, I'm, to, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to go ahead and say uh, update, uh, update uh, our table is going to be the sales table. So I'm going to say and set the month, uh, month underscore. Okay, let me get the spelling right. So month underscore name is going to be equals to but the, the information that this function I just copied and we pass in the date, which is going to return to us the month name. So once I have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and run this query again. So once this query goes through, I can run this query again. Now we should be able to see now the month column, month name column being fixed, uh, being filled with the different month name of the date, right? So now that you are done uh, with all that, I think you're done enough feature engineering. So we have been able to add three different columns, three different columns, the date, name of the day, uh, day name and if any time of the day and month of the day okay so once that's done uh, that's one step down so now we move on to exploratory data analysis which is basically called eda so in exploratory data analysis we just try to answer some few questions regarding the data so we're going to be doing exploratory data analysis with 
uh, MySQL. So if you have ever followed my channel, we used to do uh, this in Python, but for now we're going to do it in MySQL. Okay, so uh, let's get started with this. So the first one is gonna be uh, the business questions that we wish to be answered. So the first category, I have a bunch of categories. There is one for generic questions, the products, the sales, and then the customer, right? So the first one I'm going to be going to answer is the one for the product, the generic question, right? Which is some generic questions about the business, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and add that right here. So we can actually just add another set of decorations right here, just to keep your code uh, clean. Okay, so I'm just gonna add those decorations. And this is going to be called, let me call it generic, okay? Generic and uh, and that right there. So generic and that's basically what you're going to have here. So generic. Uh, let me just add some more. Okay, so good. So we have generic right here. So what uh, is going to have the first question I want to answer is this one right here. So how many uh, unique uh, cities does the data have? How many unique cities uh, does the branch have? Okay, that's our, uh, basically how many unique cities are, are containing a Walmart, a Walmart uh, branch basically. So uh, let's just write that to see. So I'm going to say select. Uh, select I'm going to say select I'm going to simply select the distinct city name so I can say distinct uh, distinct let me just get the spelling right so distinct and it's gonna be called the city because if you look closely right here in our sales data we have a column called a uh, city so I want to select the distinct city so I'm gonna say uh, this is a distinct city and it's gonna be uh, from our sales table right our sales table so if I go ahead and simply run this query now this return to us three main cities. I don't know how to pronounce this, but we have Mandalaya, Mandalay, and then we have Nai. I don't know what the cities are, but you can basically see them, right? So yeah, those are the three cities that we have. So we have three distinct cities and you can even just go and do a visual inspection of the data and you get those three uh, distinct cities. And how many distinct, uh, let's see what's the next question that we have. How many distinct, uh, in which city is each branch? So we have, now we know that we have three main cities. How many branches do we have? So again, you can just go ahead, copy this question right here. Uh, just paste it here and just say, instead of city, you just say branch, right? So it's going to return to you the number of unique branches that we have. So if you run this, uh, there's branch, uh, let me just, okay. Let me just run this again. So run this. So there's a branch A, B, and C, okay? So now I want to know in which city is each individual branch. And that's the question that we are trying to answer. So to do that, actually very simple. We just have to say uh, select and uh, select underscore distinct this uh, tint okay let me get okay sorry for my typos so distinct uh distinct okay okay distinct and then finally city so we want to select the city and we want to also select the branch that correspond to the city so branch it is going to be from our sales data table so once we have that done you can simply run the query now you can see we have uh, branch A in this specific city, branch C in this specific city, and then finally branch B in this specific city. So now you can see we have each city. And now we know which city has which of the branches. So good. So that's another question that you have answered. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply uh, paste that over here, right? So maybe just put it right here up here because it's inclusive, right? So yeah, that's basically so we have answered the, the generic question so now we can so now that you have answered the questions about the different branches and which is the branches are located we can move on to answering the, the, the questions about the different products so uh, you can have answer questions like how many unique product lines does the data have what is the most common payment method and stuff like that so let's go ahead and first finally uh, start with answering these questions and um, just for that i'm going to go ahead and create another kind of like decorations to separate our code so it's gonna be all the way here, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and have another one right here. And it's gonna be called product, right? So product, it's gonna be answering all the questions about the different products that we have, okay? Okay, so let me just try to keep this a bit at the same time a bit. Okay, so, okay, you don't have to mind this, okay? You don't have to do it actually. So paste that question here. How many unique uh, products, product lines does the data have? So how many unique product lines does the data have? And that's the question that we want to answer. So I'm just going to say select and select everything. I'm going to go ahead and simply say how many unique product lines do we have. So you can say distinct. So distinct and you can say product uh, underscore line and product line is going to be from our, our column. So our table. Okay. So our sales table. 
is a column in our sales table so this is a column in our sales table so if you're going to our sales table you should be able to find this product line table uh, column right there so this is a column that you're asking uh trying to get information from and want to see how many uh distinct products uh, product lines we have so if i run this uh, we get back six distinct product line if you have to get a count of it you can simply do self distinct you can do uh basically yeah you can also i think you can do count this way i don't think that's gonna work but let's try it also because you can say this exit is called count and then count this information yeah so let's go ahead and run this and let's see if it works so we get back six so we get six distinct uh product uh product lines okay so that's uh how we can answer that question so the next question is going to be let's move a bit quickly the next question is going to be uh what is the most common payment method so common pay most common payment method and it's going to be uh select and i'm going to select the well, let me just select everything from uh, our sales table see? right now and then you can see we run this query right here so if i run the query now you can see all all that we have all that information i want to get get the most common payment method and to get the most common payment method we can get the sum of each payment method and then if i know which one has the biggest count right so you can look in here to find the payment method which is right here so i'm just gonna say uh payment payment method just like that and if you run it we should get a list of all the payment methods so run that you get a list of all the payment method now to get a count of each so i'll say a count of each payment method so get a count and it's going to return to be just a single value so if you run this you get back 990 which is uh, basically the each row that you have your database so what i want to do is group this by uh group this by the payment method so group by and then it's going to be payment underscore method so I'm going to group by payment method and I'm going to go ahead and get the payment method for each. So the payment method and then find it like that. So I just go ahead and simply run this again. Now you can see this credit, uh, this payment method of credit card has, uh, okay, uh, we can also give a name to this just a second a bit. So let me say us and you can say uh, CTN for count. Okay, so just uh, run that again. Now you can see now it's into CTN. So credit credit uh, cards, there have been nine, 309. And if you add all that up, you should give you the number of rows that we have in our data set. Now, you might want to order this in like an ascending order or descending order. So you can say order by, and you're going to order by count, and you're going to order this in descending order because by default, it's in ascending order. So I'm going to order in descending order. And if I run the query again, now you can see we go from the top uh, to the list, right? The most common payment method is going to be our cash, and then e wallet, and then finally credit card. So uh, from all the branches, credit card is the least used payment method while cash is the leading payment method so this is for walmart okay so in other countries this might not be the case but in this specific data set uh this is the case but it's not that much of a difference so like i wouldn't say it's a significant difference or significantly affects anything so once we have that done uh, what question i would want to answer next is going to be uh, what is the most most uh selling product line so you can copy that and then simply paste that in here so how do you go about uh, answering this question? So what I want to go ahead and do is simply select, uh, select finally, you can just say select everything from, uh, everything I mean by all columns from the sales table. Right, so sales table. And if I run this, you know what we're going to get back, right? A list of the whole table basically. Now what you want to do is what is the most, uh, most uh, selling product line. So we want to find the product line that is most selling basically you're going to have a, a, a something a query just like this basically i can just simply copy this query right here so that i don't have to waste your time so i'm going to copy that and paste it right here instead of payment i'm going to say product underscore line and then yeah that's basically it and this one be product underscore line and also product line here as well so basically you're going to select product line and the count of each product line from the sales data and you're going to group it by product line because you want to do the counting based on product line and you finally want to order the result in descending order so you can see from the biggest to the smallest so if you run this you can see these are the product lines and they are different order so the most common product line is fashion accessories followed by food and beverages and the last one is health and beauty okay so it looks like a lot of guys aren't buying health products but are buying more fashion electronics and food and beverages okay so that's basically the data that we have so good you have answered that question and now let's move on to it answering this question which is what is the total revenue by month so total revenue by month and i can just add that in here so that was the total revenue by month and that's the reason why we needed the month column right here so if, if you look this way you have the month column right 
January, February, and March. So we want to know uh, between this month of January, February, and March, which of the months has the most sales of the business. So to do that, uh, just go ahead and say select, and I'm going to select uh, the month, underscore name, and you can just give it an alias name as uh, month, okay? So month, okay? And I'm going to also say, this is gonna be from the sales data, okay? Okay, so let me just remove that parenthesis or comma, sorry. And then run the screen again, you can see the different months, right? So now we're going to get, uh, basically see which of the months has the biggest sales. Okay, so I'm going to get a sum of, uh, sum of sales in each month. So I'm going to say sum, uh, to, so the total, the total column has a total number of revenue for uh, each sale. So uh, we're going to look at, uh, look at this more in depth. So don't worry about it, but basically for now, this total column has the total revenue from each individual sales. So I'm going to find the total of it. So I'm going to say as uh, total underscore sales. Okay. So you can call it total sales or total revenue. That's even a better word. So total re revenue of each month. And basically you can order in uh, order by some group. No, basically uh, what you want to do is just order by something. You can group by, yeah, you can group the information by month. So you can just say group uh, by month. Uh, underscore name and finally you want to go ahead and simply order by uh you want to order by a total uh total under let me get the spelling right so total okay total underscore revenue just like that so once we have that done if i just select this and run it again so you can see actu actually okay this is a you, you can actually order this in descending order to get a better picture of this uh, analysis so if i go ahead and run the query again so the month of january has the most sales followed by March and then February has the least sales. So uh, somehow in January, uh, uh, we have the most sales, okay? So I, I thought this might not be the case because like from Christmas, a lot of guys spend their money. So I thought that January won't have the most uh, sales, but it actually it does, January has the most sales. I don't know, maybe, maybe guys are buying New Year gifts or something like that, but yeah, for that, that's the data. So once we have that answered, I want to ask the question of, uh, what month had the largest COGS? So what is COGS? Cog COGS is just cost of goods sold. Okay. So actually this is actually best for the, the sales category, but I have it in product category. So uh, not much of a worry. Let's just go ahead and answer that question. So uh, what month had the largest uh, COGS, which is the cost of goods sold? Okay. Okay. So uh, which month had the largest COGS? Uh, COGS? Basically, we're just going to go ahead and simply say uh, select. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and simply select uh, basically which month, right? So I'm going to select the month, underscore uh, name, and you can give it uh, you can give it an alias name as month, okay? You're also going to go ahead and simply say, select the sum of uh, COGS, basically, right? Cost of goods sold. And then finally, uh, you can give it as uh, COGS. Uh, this is gonna be from our sales table, okay? And you can finally do a grouping by, you're going to group by uh, group by the month underscore name and you're also going to go ahead and order by uh, order by the cogs right so cogs co cogs stands for cost of uh, goods sold so let me just remove the comma right there so once we have this I can just select the query and run the code again so uh, you can see right here basically it's just the same result as here right kind of same results uh, basically we have February now this, this is actually a bit different but no, I think it's the same. Let's order in descending order and let's run the query again. Let's see. Because by default orders in ascending order. So basically it's the same result as above here, right? So you can see uh, basically the revenue corresponds to, uh, has a, uh, a positive relation between the revenue and finally the cost of goods sold because the more the revenue, the more the cost of goods sold, right? So they are positively correlated. So once we have that done, uh, that's what this tells us that the revenue and the cost of goods sold are positively correlated. So once we have that done, I can just go and go ahead and copy the rest of the code and another question rather. So uh, this question, I'm going to go ahead and simply paste it right here. Okay. So uh, once I have this done, uh, basically what you're going to answer is uh, what product line had the largest revenue so far? So what product line had the largest revenue? So product line and the revenue. So it's going to say select. So select. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and simply say select the product product underscore line and i'm also going to say the the sum of uh, the revenue so sum of uh this be total underscore revenue i call it total right the total and i'm going to say 
as a total total underscore revenue and this is going to be from which table are we going to do this selection from we do, do the selection from the sales table and then yeah so we're going to order by the product product uh uh the product line so we're going to the group by sorry not order by so group uh by uh product underscore line you're going to do the order order by uh total right total the total revenue of that specific product so once we have in there i am having an error because i forgot a comma right here so once we have that and select the whole query execute it now you can see the different and you can also order this in uh descending order so order in descending order because by default it's in ascending order so now you can see this way so now the list performing product by product line by total revenue is health and beauty right well the most is uh, food and beverage so uh food and beverage is actually leading in terms of generating revenue for the business while health and beauty products are not generating that much of a of a revenue but uh, the difference being around ten thousand ten thousand i don't know which currency is but probably in dollars so that's around ten thousand dollars between the food and beverages and finally the the health and beauty products so yeah that's one question we have out of the way and we have a bunch of other questions right here so let's go ahead and simply answer this uh, bunch of questions okay okay so now i'm going to go ahead and answer the question what product line had the largest uh, largest uh, revenue so actually we actually answered that question basically so i think we need to go on to this question right here so copy that okay this is a different question what product uh what city had the largest uh revenue so basically we're going to do the same thing but basically using a city right so i can just simply copy this one right here and then we can modify it to answer that specific question so what city instead of so what city has a radius revenue so instead of uh, product line i'm going to say uh city and then when you're going to do the grouping by by you're going to group by by city and branch so i want to see the city and branch information and then finally i also want to select the branch okay so branch i want to see the branch information as well so branch and then let me just forget the comma right here and this is going to be the total revenue by sales yeah that's basically what we need so once i have that done i'm just going to go ahead and uh, highlight all this and simply run the query okay so you can see the product line and the revenue right so that's basically it. so the, the most uh, the most the best performing branch is branch c and then followed by branch a and then branch b being the least performant branch but the difference between branch a and branch b is not that significant uh branch c is uh like ten thousand ahead of the other ones yeah ten thousand ahead of the other ones so maybe maybe branch branch uh, c is doing something that branch b uh branch b and a aren't doing so if, if i was the business owner I'll probably look into branch c uh sorry branch what branch c is doing that the other branches aren't doing okay so that's one question now we can answer the question of the vat basically uh, the vat value added uh, tax uh, so let's paste the question what does the question says what product line had the largest vat so vat is this value added tax so what product line had the largest value added tax so to do this i'm just going to simply say select i'm going to go ahead and simply select the product underscore line and uh, average basically the average tax underscore percent uh let me just give it an alias name as uh, avg underscore tax basically and i'm going to say this is going to be from our sales table remember our sales table and you're going to simply do this grouping by uh group and get the spelling right so group by and what do you want to group by you want to group by the product uh product underscore line and finally okay this is this is not actually tax percentage i call this column vat right so vat value added tax and you're going to do an ordering by uh let's see you can order by yeah let's going to do avg you can order by the tax average tax of uh, each of those departments and let's not forget the comma right here so i'm going to keep a comma right here and once i have that let me not uh, forget to close off this okay so once i have that selected and then run the query so now you can see uh fashion accessory has the most taxing and then finally the home and home and styles has the uh, sorry actually this is actually in uh, ascending order i want it in descending order okay so i uh, so highlight that and simply run the query again so you can see home and styles uh, home and lifestyle products have the most taxing while fashion actually has the least taxing in terms of value added tax 
so once we have that done uh, what other questions do we have we have uh, this question right here which is going to be the product of uh, the product basically the product line information so let me just go ahead and simply paste that right here so uh undo that and just simply paste that right here okay so i have this question right here this is a bit of a longer question so for this question right now i'm just going to let me just let's leave this question a bit we'll come back to this question just in a second let's move on to answering this great other questions okay so i'm just going to go ahead and simply paste them in here and the first question i'm going to go ahead in uh to answer is uh which which brand sold more products than uh, average product uh, sold right which branch did better than uh, on average so i'm going to say select uh this is going to be the branch okay so branch basically and then finally the sum uh the sum of what the sum of the quantity right sum of the products for example is the quantity so quantity and i, call, I, I can give this an alias name as uh qty quantity and it's going to be from our sales table so our sales table and then finally you're going to do a grouping by you're going to do a grouping by on this field so group by and i'm going to go ahead and do a group by uh going to group by branch so branch and then finally you're going to go ahead and apply a having clause okay so what's the difference between a where clause and a having clause again if you don't know this I did a whole series on this on my channel so you can check that channel out a difference between having clothes and wear clothes okay so i'm not going to go into depth about that so you can check that video out and then finally we're going to do quantity and quantity is going to be more than uh select uh select uh the average gonna be the avg right the average function we're going to select the average of quantity quantity and this is going to be from our sales table just like that so once we have that query run i mean okay let me not forget the comma right here okay so once you have that query run i'm just gonna uh, run that query written i'm just going to press uh, run this query so now you can see uh right now you can order this again in a, an, another order if you want to but for now you can see you have the different information right here so i think this is the leading one uh branch a had the most sold quantity and then branch c and then finally branch uh uh, b okay so you can see all that information right there so the next question i want to answer is uh, what is the most uh, common product line by gender so let's go ahead and simply answer that question right here so the answer to the question of the most product line by gender i'm just going to go ahead and simply say select i'm going to go ahead and select gender information i'm going to select uh this is going to be sorry uh, excess of this going to be product underscore line and then finally you're also going to have the count right and just use upper cases right here so count count of what count of gender uh you can call it as total underscore count right ctn this will be from our sales table and you're going to go ahead and do the grouping by this so we're going to group by two main things we're going to group by gender and the different product lines so say group uh by agenda and also we want to group by product underscore line and then finally we want to do a grouping by uh group by total underscore count right here and you're going to do this grouping uh sorry this is going to be actually not group by uh, actually order by not group by so make sure i change that to be order by okay so now that makes more sense once i have the query uh, selected i'm going to run the query now you can see the different product line right here so you can see uh females are leading in fashion accessory right probably so females are leading in fashion accessories more than uh, males because uh, actually it actually makes sense because like females prefer fashion products more than men so uh, that's actually logical that uh, it happens that way so another question that you want to answer is what is the average rating of each product line so i want to go ahead and uh, answer that question so i'm just going to go in here minimize this and then scroll down here and then say we're trying to answer this question of uh, what is the average rating of uh, each product line so to answer this question again you're going to use a select statement so select and you're going to go ahead and select uh select let's say select everything uh this is going to be from our sales sales data right so this is going to stand to us the whole table right so what information you want to answer a uh, question you want to answer is the uh, getting the average rating of each product line right so that's uh let's go ahead and do that so the first one to do is simply do uh let me just say the average will be avg right average of what uh rating column so average of the rating column uh we're going to do the averaging and i'm going to say call it as uh 
avg underscore rating which is average rating i also want to select the product line so the product underscore line so because i want to get the product line information as well and if i want to go ahead and do a group uh group group by and group by i'm going to do a group by by product uh product underscore line and do an order by i'm going to order by average underscore rating just like that and i'm going to order this in descending order okay so once i have this done just select the query and run that query so once i run the query i can see the average rating of each product line right so you can see this information right there so the most uh product line that, has, that the product line that has the best rating is food and beverages followed by fashion accessories while the least one is home and sales so people prefer rating food and beverages along with fashion products more than home style products that's the question that uh, that uh, this query can answer okay so now i also want to go ahead and if you look closely you can see the average is a bit too much i just want the average rounded to two or one decimal place so how do you do the rounding off so just come right up here and just say round just like that and you're going to round this off to two decimal places so when you say two and then uh sorry space two and then close that off so that's basically going to round it off to two decimal places for us so i just select this query and run again now you can see now the average rating is now related to two decimal places yeah so guys uh, we have answered all the questions regarding the products and the generic question so in the next video we'll answer the question on sales and customer and then we'll move on to uh we'll talk about a bit of the the calculations for the taxing and how that you can use all that in your analysis so guys uh, if you enjoyed this video so far and you consider uh you might consider liking the video for the algorithm subscribe the youtube channel if you haven't already for more videos like this on my school data analysis and again if you're new to my school i have a whole series on my school on the youtube channel so kindly check it out on the channel's main page thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one keep safe